from his window in the abandoned hotel in New Hampstead. Mallory could look down over Primrose Hill to flooded London, transformed into a cemetery of empty office blocks, whose eyes stared blankly back at him. The tropical weather had cloaked the concrete and glass in green satin that shimmered in the heat, now the habitat of reptiles, howler monkeys and legions of fruit bats. Wiping the sweat from his brow, Mallory could hear muffled footsteps coming up the stairs to his apartment. Lauren had offered to become his therapist. Her blue-green eyes, her throaty voice, calming his nervous disposition. She was explaining that the Gothic Mafia did not exist and that Sinatra the new replicant godfather was a figment of his imagination. But Mallory was not so sure. Her provocative glamour and firm insistent narrative was somehow too certain. How did she know what was happening out there? Mallory lay down on the white sheets of his bed his body a tapestry of smeared blood from unhealed wounds, together with dried tracks of mud and faded tattoos. Lauren looked down at him, as though from heaven. But a goddess of what? He couldn't exactly say. Moving slowly, tucking her chin gently into her neck, and rolling her eyes, Lauren purred, You don't have to say anything, and you don't have to do anything. Not a thing. Oh, maybe just a whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Mallory? You just put your lips together and blow. Can you get Bogey to help me? Mallory pleaded. But there was no reply. A psychedelic mist was seeping through the window, and strange birds were flying in loops beyond the glass. They seemed to be crying, Sinatra, Sinatra, Sinatra. But as he reached out to touch her hand, he realised that Lauren Bacall had already left the building.